Interpretation of financial statements, gross profit margin. Financial statements provide important financial information for users who do not have access to internal accounts. As we did in one of our earlier videos, we spoke about two types of users of the financial information. We have the external who only have access to the general purpose accounting information, which is the profit and loss and the financial position account and maybe cash flow and the notes. And we have the internal. In addition to the general purpose financial statement, they do have access to other management accounts, which can be detailed accounts or explanations to certain activities in the business or for a department. Okay, so for instance, suppliers or the government who are external users can see how much a profit an entity has made, the value of its assets and the level of its cash reserve, which can be found in either the profit or loss or the balance sheet. Now, although these figures are useful, they do not mean a great deal by themselves. Okay, so if the user is to make any real meaning of the figures in the financial statement, they need to be properly analyzed using accounting ratios and then compare to either prior year's ratio of the same entity or measure it against an average ratio or an average percentage in the industry. Okay, so in this episode, we are going to discuss gross profit margin. So a gross profit margin tells of the balance a business has after it has paid its direct cost or cost of production or cost of goods sold. It can also show a percentage of the business's revenue that covers its cost. So when you have a gross profit margin, it can tell you which percentage of the sales that you made covers or pays for its direct cost. It is one of the three profitability ratios, the others being the net profit margin and the operating margin. Now of the three, the gross profit margin is debatably the most important because it can tell the commercial viability of a business because the gross profit is the first of the net that you arrive the moment you have your revenue and you take your cost of sales or production from it you get to the gross profit margin and an analysis of that can tell you whether you arrive at the net profit which is the most essential level or metrics of a business the net profit margin is what the business pays to the owner or what ensures the business can continue in operation so when you have a high gross profit margin you can estimate that you will get a net profit looking at your level of administrative or operative expenses if you have a low gross profit margin then from that time onwards a red flag can be raised let's take a look at the formula for calculating gross profit margin so we do so by taking the gross profit from the profit or loss we divide it by the net revenue then we multiply it by 100%. So gross profit is calculated by net revenue, less cost of sales or cost of goods sold or direct expenses. It depends on the type of business you are. If you are into production, you can use cost of sales or cost of production or cost of goods sold. If you are into service rendering, you can use direct expenses. Then net revenue as seen in the formula is the revenue less any direct expenses, which can be discount allowed or carried inwards. Okay, let's move on to talk about the analysis of the gross profit. After you have calculated the gross profit, what does it mean for the business's activity? Now, when you calculate the gross profit for one year and you compare it to that of the previous year or the industry and there is an increase, now, it can be that the business was able to increase its selling price in the particular year compared to the previous year or other players in the industry. This can be as a result of the business being in a certain position that gives it leverage to increase its selling price. Maybe it has some level of autonomy or it has some specialty in that area. So it gives it the opportunity to do so. The second is that the business was able to manage its cost well such that it was able to reduce it, leaving its selling price static. And it did so better than it did last year or than the existing businesses in the industry. The third is that both the revenue and the cost increase but the increase in revenue is more than the increase in cost now when there is a decrease it also means that the business decreased its selling price with the cost staying static it can be as a result of increased competition in the market which caused the business to reduce or step down its selling price for it to continue to be viable in the market so the second is increased in cost of goods sold or cost of production or direct expenses. This can be to some factors prevailing in the market, 
with increases cost of doing business. But here, it should be such that the business does not have the opportunity to increase its selling price commensurately to measure to the increase in the cost. Because selling price is when profit is added to the cost. So when your cost increases and your selling price does not increase, automatically you narrow your gross profit and it will affect the percentage. And the third is when the cost of goods sold or the production cost or direct expenses increases by a proportion higher than the increase that the selling price sees. So this can be to some inefficiencies leading to the expenses increasing and the selling price not going high. It can also be that the business is dealing in a product which does not allow it to increase it as its cost increases. There are so many substitutes that the business cannot afford to do so. Let's test our understanding. A J Limited is a company that deals in luxury vehicles. Statement of profit or loss for the years ended 31st December 2020 and 2019 are shown below. So we have the revenue for both years, cost of sales leading to the gross profit of 25000 and 28000 respectively. We have operating expenses, then operating profit comes in. We have the finance cost, then a profit before tax, income tax, then a profit for the year. Additional information, the company has recently been suffering from rising costs that it has not been successful in passing on to its customers. So we are supposed to calculate the gross profit margins for the years ending 31st December 2020 and 31st December 2019. Then we are supposed to comment on the comparative performance for the two years ending 31st December 2020 and 31st December 2019. For solution, we will start with the gross profit margin formula, which we've already discussed is the gross profit divided by net revenue times 100 or can be picked from the profit or loss account that was just stated. For the year 2020, the gross profit margin will be 55.56%, which was gotten by dividing the gross profit of 25,000 in the question by 45,000 revenue multiplied by 100%. For 2019, the gross profit was 62.2%. Also, we arrived at that by dividing the gross profit of 28,000 by 45,000 revenue and multiply by 100%. We are supposed to make meaning out of it. The explanation will be that the question stated that AJ has been experiencing some increased cost. Okay, so ideally, when your cost goes up, your revenue should go up by the same margin to be able to get your profit. But the question stated that he has been unsuccessful in passing on those costs by way of increasing its profit margin or its selling price to make up. It means that the cost of sales increased and the selling price stood. That is why the gross profit margin dropped from 62.2%. To 55.56%. And if nothing is done about it and the trend continues, a J can find itself in red lines. Let's test our understanding again. Now, Foster Co. operates in the real estate industry. Its statement of profit or loss for the year ended 31st December 2021 is shown below. So we have revenue for Foster, its cost of sales, gross profit of 34,000, operating expenses, operating profit of 20,000. We have finance cost, which leads to profit before tax of 18300 We have income tax expense of 30000 then the profit for the year of 15300 In additional information, the gross profit margin for the real estate industry for the year 2021 is 45%. So here, yeah, we're supposed to compare to the real estate industry's gross profit margin. Then we are supposed to calculate the gross profit margin for Foster Co. for the year ending 31st December 2021. And we are also supposed to comment on Foster Co's performance compared to that of the industries. When we come to the solution, the gross profit margin formula, as we already know, is the gross profit divided by the net revenue times 100%. So when we do so, the gross profit for Foster for 2021 will be 53.13%. This came about as a result of dividing the gross profit of 34,000 by the revenue of 64,000 and multiply by 100%. So per the question, the industry's gross profit margin is 45%, meaning Foster exceeded the industry's gross profit margin. Now, this can be as a result of a couple of factors. The first is that Foster's revenue increased above the average price prevailing in the industry. Okay, so that has to be investigated since only Foster's was given. So maybe Foster increased its revenue because he had monopoly or he had some leverage to do so, whilst other players in the industry couldn't or he increased his by imagining that the other industry players couldn't do so. 
Secondly, it could be that Foster was able to manage to reduce its cost of doing business better than the other players. Lastly, it could be that Foster's increase in revenue was higher than its increase in cost comparatively to other players. It did better.